Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The front lift and toad is complete. Beautiful. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project over here with Toad XJ episode four. Here we go. Front lift is in. Why don't we talk about it? All right, here we go guys. We got our two inch budget boost pucks in with a new, new-ish uh, factory spring isolator, spring insulator, whatever you want to call it. And we got Rough Country shock installed. This is going to lift our front about two inches. This is what we need to pair with our rear leaf springs that I did an add a leaf on. That was completed in the last episode of the Toad. We got our tire on. It looks good. It's sitting at ride height in the back. Just enough lift to look stock with 30 inch wheels. That's beautiful. Again, these are 30 by nine and a half on factory XJ Echo rims. They're 15 inch diameter wheels. So uh, this pairs beautifully. Oh, it's gonna pair beautifully with my two inch boost I had laying around. Again, I might've gotten these from Roy Remick. I got a bunch of XJ parts in stock. So I'm really happy I was able to get a, a lift going on. These Rough Country shocks are new. Just about everything else is used. Okay, let's dig in a little deeper. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is jack up the vehicle. Then you can disconnect your sway bar links and disconnect the shock. This will allow you to drop the front end down. I didn't really have to disconnect this because the sway bar was uh, rotted in half, I do believe. Uh, the factory shock was pretty badly seized up here. Now, what I had to do was, well, you got to get this nut off, of course, but uh, sometimes the shock will spin. So what you can do is, this is a great little trick. Where is it? Uh, what I do is I take a grinder, a little cutoff wheel, and I'll notch a flat edge. This way you could clamp a vice grip onto this bad boy. And then when we're yanking up that top bolt, when it spins, the vice grip will hit the frame of the vehicle and it will no longer spin on you. Underneath this guy over here, underneath all this brake apparatus, uh, it's kind of difficult to get to. So this tool works fantastic. It's a swivel head. Uh, mine was a 15, they could be 15, 14, maybe even 13, depending on what shocks you have previously installed. But this swivel head, little gear wrench guy, man, it makes the job so much easier. I, of course, have the air box out of the way. Uh, don't mind these battery trays. Maybe experimenting with dual batteries, I don't know yet. Uh, that could be in the future. Let me know if you wanna see something like that. But yeah, uh, that comes off. But this little guy and a vice grip holding onto the shock comes right out. These bolts usually get seized on. They're factory 13 millimeters on a 13 millimeter bolt. So uh, actually this is the bolt and there's a nut on the bottom. So I use a impact gun on the bottom to zip out the nut while holding a 13 millimeter box wrench on top. But you might wanna torch it first, heat it up real good break those rust bonds, and then they should zip out. Now on the passenger side, it's much easier. It's just a straight shot between your AC unit and your engine coolant reservoir. You just pop a 14, 13, or 15 on there. You zip it out with an impact, and you could grip onto it there if you have to. No biggie, that zips right off. A lot less complicated than a driver's side. So, let's come back over to the driver's side. Let's talk about these guys. These are your sway bar and links. This is stock height. And once you squeeze them on there nice and good with these really cheap bushings, you could go ahead and cut off the excess. That will help you from having the sway bar head punch through your frame. Sometimes if you add an extended sway bar link, but you don't have enough lift, boom, it could hit the frame of your Jeep. Now, if you want to see what I'm dealing with, <laughs> I think I think this was the broken end link. 
So that sway bar was shot. And this, this is the pieces of the other side. Oh yeah, this was really shot. I just chopped it up as best I could to uh, to get this sucker off, man. It was, uh, oh, that's a good looking nut. I'll save this. But yeah, this was pretty shot. As you can see, <laughs> these bolts are going nowhere. Uh, let's look at this. These little collars, this is the inside of the bushing, oops, where'd it go? The inside of the bushing that goes over here. All right, slides right in there. Those go right here. So uh, this one was really bad. I had to chisel away at it with the cutoff wheel little by little till I was able to get a screwdriver in there and gently pry this up and slide it out. I was really careful to try to not damage these threads because it's pretty difficult to remove this factory bolt. So I wanted to reuse the factory bolt, just uh, clean it up a little bit. So I was able to extract this collar on both sides, clean it up, get the sway bar end links on, and then I just reattached them with the factory hardware. Now, when you put a puck in, you're probably gonna have to use spring compressors. When you take out the spring, don't forget, there is a little hidden bolt right in there. This is a spring retainer. That's 13 millimeter. Don't forget to torch that to take it off. But once you get your spring out on the driver's side, it is a great idea to go ahead and add in this bracket. This is a bracket for a track bar. I used this Rough Country one. It's not so much for lift purposes, although you can have drop brackets that allow you to lift your vehicle uh, very, very far up into the air and still maintain your steering geometry. But this comes off with two nuts right there, and then there's two more bolts right on the bottom. The bottom bolts go into the frame. Top bolts, they go into a little bracket. And these two bolts are together in this piece. So uh, you might wanna remove the nuts and you can slide them both out together. And then you put this thing back on. What you do is you just hang it right onto that bracket. You push the little bolts through. You can put one hand down here, reaching around. You get the other hand up top, you can fit it. It works, it's like a big XJ hug. But there we go. I still have to attach the actual track bar. Um, it's kind of easier to do it on the ground, if I'm being honest. You could have somebody push the Jeep side to side while you get the bolt in the hole. What hole? This hole. So we'll reattach this. As soon as I get these wheels on, I'm all ready to go. Nice and staged up for that. But yeah, um, you're gonna have to take out this track bar first and many times the track bar bolt will be rusted on to the track bar flag nut so guess what happened to me <laughs> track bar bolt broke off here is the end of it the rest of it is stuck inside this bushing that metal bushing just grabs a hold of that bolt and it seizes right on and then what you have to do is you have to cut off the back of this bolt to get this track bar out uh, ends up cutting it off right about here. What you do is you put a cutoff wheel right in this spot, right where you see those cut marks and you can cut behind the bolt. And then you have to pull out the rest of it from this little gap. Uh, hence me chopping up the flag nut and pulling it out. This, this is what's left of it. So this is a garbage track bar. Nobody feels like drilling this out or replacing these bushings especially when you can get like a $100 kit from Rough Country. Again, great extendable track bar because this collar can adjust just by rotating this. You don't have to unbolt either end. And if you want to see what a factory flag nut looks like, this is what it's supposed to look like. I was able to find one from a much rustier vehicle that ended up coming off without a problem. Uh, I've done so many of these XJs, you just, you just can't predict it. Uh, I had a rust-free XJ right here, bolt snapped off, and I had a rusty one like Rec J, I think it was Rec J, and I was able to salvage the bolt. So uh, I don't have to reuse this, 
oops, through that, because uh, I'm gonna use this included hardware. It's a little beefier. I'm gonna have to get a 17 millimeter wrench up in that little crack, and then I'll be able to tighten this down when it's in place. Another thing about track bars on XJs, this hole could be a culprit of death wobble. If this gets wallowed out too much and it's not looking perfectly round like this is, this is a good one. Uh, if it's looking any bigger than this or oval or some weird kind of shape, you might want to take a thick, thick washer and just weld it on here. Give this baby some extra support. They might even make track bar support brackets for some extra beef, but I'm only rocking 30s, so shouldn't be too bad. I'll be all right. All right, so we got the shocks, the springs, the pucks. We got the sway bar end links. We got the track bar. Uh, I'm not doing anything to the drag link. Uh, maybe a steering stabilizer down the road, but we're just gonna keep stock geometry. And the best part about this is I was able to do this lift because the, oh man, I cranked this on, <laughs> because the diff gears are intact. I really do believe the shifter linkage was the problem for the four wheel drive. That's why it's missing the drive shaft over here. See that, no drive shaft. So I'm gonna proceed with this lift. I'm very confident that it's in good shape. I checked out these gears. Oh, gross. As you can see, when I open this thing, all the gears look good. Hey, hey, check this out, guys. Could be best case scenario. Uh, what we're looking at is inside of the front diff, and there's no chunks, there's no missing pieces. So, so far, so good. Got it all cleaned out, and I think we're gonna proceed with the front lift. I'm not gonna swap this front end. Uh, looks good. We will have to uh, source a drive shaft because, well, there's no drive shaft on it. But uh, I'm confident we can use this diff and we'll straighten out whatever transfer case issue we have. I think it's just the linkage. So this is fantastic. On with the lift. So before we get this thing going, don't forget to remind me to put that diff fluid in there. That's just about it for the front. We are going to want to put in new sway bar bushings up here. This is pretty shot. I'll order the Moog ones. They come in blue online. Amazon has got like next day delivery on those. It's very common. Just 15 millimeter bolts on each side. What's next? While I'm in this area, I might as well spray some. Oh, can you see that? I'm gonna hit this with some penetrating oil. Come on, baby, zoom. Yes, there we go. Right in there, those are the sway bar bushing bolts going right through the frame onto that welded on nut. Very hard to see, but since I got this all apart, might as well lube that up. This way the bolts won't break on me. And this damage, this is what I'm gonna have to address tonight. You will see the results of this in the next episode of The Toad, hopefully. I'll show you right now what I got in store. Check it out all right here. This is what I got. It's just a piece of XJ frame took out of a parts XJ. If you line everything up the way it should be, you can see that this was pushed in a little bit. So I went ahead and I split this frame rail and I'm in the process of pulling this piece out and then I'm just gonna weld this baby back in, paint it all to match and this sucker is gonna be a nice, complete factory XJ frame once again. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for your Toad XJ update. Episode four in the books. Got some more work to do. Gonna get cracking right away. If you wanna see more front end work on an XJ, don't forget to check out the Rec J videos. Uh, I really go to town on that bad boy, uh, squaring up the smashed damage the wreckage, if you will, from the wreck, if you will. But yeah, that's it. So uh, talking through you guys on a new project, referring you to old classic videos. Hopefully uh, you get a lot of information out of this stuff and enjoy the clips and all that other good stuff. So that's it, guys. Thanks again for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next project. Peace.
I have an urgent and shocking Toad XJ update. The battery tray area is complete.